Good morning. Uh, this is John Bourne, and I've made this small video to talk to you about some of the things that are of interest in starting up ChatScript. Now, what is ChatScript? Well, it's a natural language processing uh, system that's open source, and many of you have heard of ChatScript from this slide, which I've showed around various places. But it has been used along with Pandora Bots to create Mora, which is my Anytime University resource aid, and Professor IQ. And Professor IQ is the smiley uh, guy that's on the bottom left of this slide. So our intent is to help you understand how to create an intelligent chatbot that you can put in your own courses and be able to uh, chat with Professor IQ. Mara is working and used by hundreds of students at American Sentinel University. So if this project on Professor IQ has lots of potential, but it needs your help in being able to understand how to create bots. So first, I'm going to go and say, where do you start? Well, if you want to grab a uh, copy of ChatScript, you can go to a free software download at SourceForge. So if you're in Google, you can just type in SourceForge and ChatScript and you'll get this page. And then you can download ChatScript. And that gives you ChatScript, in this case, uh, version 4.4e.zip, which will run on, um, I guess, on most things, Linux, Mac, and on PCs. So once you have that downloaded, what you're going to need to do is to unzip it. And let's see if I can find a place to put it. Yes, look at this for a second. I made a... Um, directory called ChatScript, um, and in it, over here, and you can see there's multiple versions, I put the unzipped version and in here in ChatScript-4.4e. And after you've unzipped it, well, there's a bunch of stuff in there, including the original zip, which I kept around just in case. Now, this will work the same on the PC and the Mac, but there are some differences between the PC and the Mac. Let me show you a few things that you need to know. There are lots of files that come with it. And in this file, you'll see there are a um, number of files which you can use. If you're running a PC, the very easiest thing is to run chatscript.exe. And it just runs right out of the box, just like that. I'll show you how it runs on the Mac, but it's not quite as smooth as that. There's a whole set of documentation, which I um, think you ought to look at at some point. Uh, that documentation will take you many, many hours to read. Uh, there's a bit like 17 or 20-some manuals in there. However, you can do a lot of stuff without uh, even reading the documentation. Now, um, some significant points here. There's a folder called Raw Data. And in Raw Data, there's a bunch of bots. One of them's called Harry. And Harry has in it four, uh, four files. And those four files enable us to create a very simple bot to demonstrate how ChatScript works. Let's see. I need to go back and show you that besides uh, Harry, there's also Mora, in which we have all the files from Mora that are available, and you can look at any of those by editing them. Now, much more to know. If you're running a Mac, um, there's a command which you have to run to compile uh, for the Mac. And I usually run this and call it something like um, oh, chat. And you can see there I put chat. So I have to then go to my command line interface and type um, chat. And I'll show you that in just a moment on how it runs. But for the PC, and I'm, I'm assuming you're probably running the PC, you just have to type chat script. So that works. Now, um, there's much to learn in here. Uh, 
but I'll go through and demonstrate. We can come back to more things to learn later. So let's look for a moment at um, the terminal window. And this is the easiest place to work, is to actually just talk to a bot that you create. I mentioned Harry. Well, if I start up chat script by saying, this is what I have to do on the Mac, on the PC you just type chat script, but, um, and with an argument called local, meaning, meaning that it's running locally, you can also have it run off a server too, no problem. But if I do that, you get some kind of stuff that looks like that. And gee, it looks like it went through it all. And I can type in my name and it will say, welcome back. Um, and I'll say, uh, for example, what is your name? Oh, it doesn't remember what its name is. I wonder if I was supposed to type that in this example. So let me go and look in raw data. Let me look in Harry. And let's go and look at the various files that are there. Um, I'll open an editor, a text editor, and look up here. So here is that first file called introductions. That's in this list, and you can see the four files that are there. I've put some of them up here. In introductions, there's a topic. Basically, this is about hello. And the first two things you don't have to really use. You can replicate them again, and they'll work fine. It says, have you been here before, uh, is asked. What is your name? So if I was over here in this um, particular thing, what is your name should have said um, something. So I can do reset, and it comes back, welcome to chat script. I say, what is your name? And it says, Harry says, my name is Harry. Notice I have a keyword, a um, percentage bot, which is a variable, which is the current bot, Harry. So I say, my name is Harry. Harry says, my name is Harry. Works, doesn't it? Um, and if I do any of these other things I've been trying out, it might do something like, what is the language of Albania? Oh, well, I don't know, or England, or anything else. There's a, a set of materials that are in data files that permit you to ask questions like that. What is the language, I don't know, of Spain? Let's see what happens. Ah, it works. The language of Spain is Spanish. And it's very easy in text files to build um, dictionaries of this sort that you can ask questions. Now if I go on and hit return, it says, have I been here before? Um, let's just say no. No, I don't want to explain. Uh, okay. Uh, are you interested in? It'll, it'll go ahead and quibble with you for a while. It quibbles and asks you things that seemingly intelligent, but not very. This comes from the original work on ELISA, which was done at MIT decades and decades ago, where you can have appearance of intelligence without really having it. Now, it next asks, did you run away from home when you were little? See the rule? With a T, this is called a gambit. And if you answer yes, or any of the synonyms for yes, it should say, uh, was it fun? So I'll type yes. Was it fun? Oh, um, it does ask that. And if you said no, it would say this. And another gambit would be, let's see what it asks. Oh, it comes back and does the next one in sequence. So this is a storytelling set of rules. It goes from one to another and asks questions and you respond. Now, there are other ways of doing questions and answers. And there's much, much to learn. But I think this is probably enough for the first lesson. If you wanted to change anything here, um, if you wanted to say, for example, um, my name is Bob, all you do is just type in Bob there, and save it, and go back to your um, terminal window and type build. Uh, well, let's just do that just for the fun of it so I can show you one last thing. My name is Bob. There you go. I'm going to save it. It's saved.
Now I have to rebuild it so it'll work. If I say build Harry, it goes through and hello again. Okay, well I'm going to reset it so we know who we are. Welcome to ChatScript. What is your name? My name is Bob. How about that? So you see how easy it was for me to fix that rule and change it. So thanks for listening, and I hope this gets you started with using ChatScript.